Hi, I'm Paul Jones, and welcome to Pinholes and Pixels. I thought first what I'd do is just show you uh, the pinhole camera, and this is the camera I use 90% of the time, maybe 95% of the time. I do make my own, and those are 4x5 and 8x10 cameras, but this one is much more convenient. It's a roll film camera, and it takes 120 film. You get 12 exposures on a roll. So it's easier than lugging around a bunch of uh, film holders. This is the front end. That's the back end. And if you notice, there's no viewfinder. So when you use a pinhole camera, you set the camera up and aim it and kind of hope for the best. It's a, sort of an estimation composition. Um, now behind this lever, if I slide that open, that's the lens. You see a little brass circle, and in the, time, in the center of that brass circle is a very tiny dot, and I don't know if you can see it, but that is the lens. It's just a hole in a piece of brass, and that's how I make my exposures. I thought I'd go by and uh, give a brief description of some of these photographs, and what I was thinking or after I take the photograph, uh, what I look and see after a sort of a, a gut reaction. Most of my photographs are, are just that. It's a spontaneous reaction to something I see, and I know something's going on, and I try to uh, capture that and sometimes figure out afterwards what it was that I saw, what attracted me to that. In this case, it's a, a box in front of town hall downtown Fairfield, and I had been driving by it for years wanting to take a picture of it, but the light was never quite right. It was too harsh. And one day, I drove by. The light was perfect. I had my camera. I got out, and I went up, and I, I always saw it as sort of a sentinel in front of the town hall, sort of a, a soldier standing post. And as I went to photograph, uh, I realized that right here was a little pebble and written on the pebble was the phrase, pray for peace. And uh, that's how I got the title for that. And it was, in my mind, a little odd to associate that thing with a soldier of some sort. And then the, the phrase on the pebble being, pray for peace. Um, on this photograph, it has that same kind of feel. You have the, the soldiers, the sentinel, the people. But in this case, I feel more of it's a sort of lost souls. It's sort of a moody shot, and it just caught my attention, and I knew exactly what that one was about when I photographed it. And I knew the longer exposure, the water gets very smooth and soft, and there's the distance, and they, they just seem to be lost out there. Uh, most of my photographs have that sort of... Um, secondary meaning. If you look into it, you can almost always find another meaning, something a little deeper than just the graphic quality. That certainly drew me to it initially, but it goes beyond that in almost everything I do. As is in this shot, it's just a pier, and the water looks very smooth, but the waves are crashing in, but the exposure was close to five minutes long, so the water again smooths out. It has a very tranquil feel, and there's the path leading to the light, and light, of course, always symbolizes knowledge. Well, maybe not always, but mostly. Um, in this shot, this was done at the Cloisters. Again, that's a five-minute exposure. And uh, they don't scoot people out of any place because I'm in there with my pinhole camera. This exposure was, again, about five minutes long, and there are people wandering around there all the just during the entire exposure. But since they're moving, they don't really register. If you look closely, there are little spots of light that look a little out of place. And uh, I, I like to refer to those as the ghosts of the cloisters. And uh, that's that. And above, I was in Baltimore walking around. Uh, it was early on a Sunday morning. And I came across this parking lot, and it was empty with the exception of one car. And you have all the buildings in the background, and I just wondered how you have all those buildings and a parking lot 
and no people. And it reminded me of uh, uh, growing up in the late 50s and early 60s, all those awful black and white science fiction movies where you'd, you'd look down the streets of New York and it'd be empty. And that was the sense I got from that. On this photograph of the apple orchard in Vermont, now, as I say, I like to, to throw in symbols. I like the photographs to be deeper than just a graphic image. But I was uh, with family, and they were picking apples. And I'm not a big apple picker, so I went off with my camera. And it's this huge apple orchard in the middle of nowhere in Vermont. And I come around the corner, and I see this box spring and mattress sitting on these apple crates. And it just struck me as just bizarre. You know, what, what's going on there? So that's just an amusing shot, I thought. This photograph of a fountain in France is a very early image. This is one of the very first I took with the pinhole camera. Now, I knew with the long exposures, uh, moving objects would take on a certain characteristic, certain quality. I wasn't sure what it would be. I'm still learning, but I'm, I'm getting a handle on it now. So I wasn't sure how this would come out, but uh, I loved the way it leaves this little trace of light around the fountain. And that's the water spilling over from this wand, these wands, you know, spraying out in all directions. And, and it gives it a floating quality. There's no way I could have anticipated that. I knew something was going to happen. I didn't know what it was going to be. So uh, that's how, you know, you go on your, your ba basic instinct on how this is going to, you know, that something's going to happen. You keep your fingers crossed. And when you have it like that, it's, it's a lucky surprise. Uh, here again, we have movement. Now I'm a little, this, this was, photograph was taken recently, within the past three months. And now I'm getting a better handle of how movement works. And I knew the flags would, would almost disappear. The closer to the stem, the, you know, there'd still be enough of an image that you'd recognize, you'd recognize them as American flags waving in the breeze. And again, you, hear, you have the same quality as the image before, the, the, the path leading to the light. But here it's a different feel, a different mood. And uh, down here, this is a totally different uh, approach for me in, in most of the stuff I do. This is a perspective shot. Uh, I've tried to print it as a, as a grand image, as a mountain. You know, the skies, big sky, almost uh, a western feel to it. This was shot in uh, Monroe, Connecticut. And if you look, you can see a tire track from the, from the truck that dumped the, uh, the pile of dirt on that location. And that's all that was. So this one is just lighting, contrast, and that interesting perspective. As I said, <clears throat> most of what I photograph, I like to have another something else going on other than just the graphic image in front of you. But sometimes a photograph of an Elvis impersonator is just a photograph of an Elvis impersonator. This photograph was done uh, at, the, uh, at Coney Island at the Mermaid Parade, which takes place, I think, in June. And there are all these wonderful characters that get dressed up, and mostly in aquatic themes. But occasionally, the Elvis impersonator sneaks in. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. It's a little raucous, but fun nonetheless. So that's it. Very simple, straightforward. And if you want to meet folks, this is better than the puppy. People are so curious. They just, <laughs> it's really, it's, it's, uh, I've, I've met a lot of, uh, well, say interesting people taking photographs of this thing. I love the